Well, howdy there, folks, and welcome into today's video. First off, uh, my voice, I understand. So basically how it works is every million dollars plus you lose in the stock market, um, your voice gets twice as deep and it gets base boosted, <laughs> okay? But uh, uh, nonetheless, guys, I, I want to get into a, a serious subject today. You know, um, I've lost over a million dollars in the past six months. And I think it's the type of video that I think is needed at a time like this in the market. And I want to describe kind of, you know, how you get to that place where you're down, you know, seven figures in a matter of six months, right? Because it can happen pretty darn quick in the stock market. And so we'll go through this. I'll give those different points on why I believe this has happened. Secondly, what we're going to talk about is when does the pain end, which I think is something that a lot of people are wondering, like, you know, how much longer are we talking? Three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, like how much longer does this uh, vicious pain last that we've kind of had in the market? And so we'll discuss that as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this as always. Um, thanks for joining me. Now, first off, I just want to address something right off the top. It's actually not that hard for me to address um, something like this, we're talking about like, um, you know, being down a lot of money in the stock market. And the reason being that like, one, I've been in the stock market for a long, long time, right? It's like four, going on 14 years now. And so I've come to expect that I'm going to get absolutely shredded in the market during certain time periods, like shredded, right? Um, and I've just, I've come to grips with that a long time ago. And so I never, I never like um, get down about it. Like, oh man, I'm so depressed because uh, I'm down on money or something like that. Like, that's just a life I live. That's a life I chose. And, and as I say, you know, um, you make your bed and lay in it or, or whatever that saying goes, right? And so um, I, don't, I never throw myself a pity party. I never like, um, you know, get down about it or something like that. Like, that's just part of the, that's just part of this game. I'm going to, you know, as an individual stock picker, there's going to be some times where I'm just, I'm just getting torn up. And this is a sort of market, especially the past six months, where I've just been absolutely torn up. I think it started kind of in the back half of 21, but in terms of the real kind of vicious part, it's really been in the past six months, okay? And so, yeah, I, I never put myself in a victim mentality or feel bad for me or throw a pity party because at the end of the day, you know, I'll get back to those days where it's like, oh, I made six figures today. Oh, I made a quarter mil today. Oh, I made a half mil today. Oh, I made, you know, 700,000 this week. Like, we'll get back to those time periods. Um, you just got to go through kind of the pain to, to get back to those time periods, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into this. We'll, we'll talk about why I believe this is happen and then we'll get into obviously um, how long I think this is going to last. I also need to remember to let you guys know why my voice is uh, messed up at the end of this video. So uh, we'll get into that as well. And also, if you want to check out my uh, crypto partner, FTX US, check out the first link in the description down there. They got a pretty awesome deal right now where you can get up to $100 in free crypto signing up with an account using my code Holy Smokas, okay, as your, your referral code there. So, first thing is we got to understand the market's gone very, very risk off. And I'm going to show you some slides here in just a minute on, on how insanely risk off this market's really gone. Risk off, what that means essentially is investors in the market don't want to take risk and usually what the market's driven by for the most part is wall street money right and so if you get in a sort of market where Wall Street doesn't want to take risk, they're not going to buy anything that's higher growth, anything that loses money. Um, those stocks are just going to be out of favor, right? And I own several of those stocks that would fit that criteria. Yeah, they're high growth, but they're also seen as riskier companies, um, you know, by the market. It doesn't mean they are riskier. It's just that's the way they're seen by the market, right? It doesn't mean the market's right or I'm right. It's just that's the way it is. And, and that's the way you kind of got to understand in the market, right? And so it doesn't matter if they have a good balance sheet. It doesn't matter if they're going to turn to profitability in the next year or two. At the end of the day, I own several companies that, as of right now, are not profitable. And if you have revenue growth, I'll, you know, Wall Street just doesn't care about that story right now. You know, the, we go back a couple of years ago, yeah, it was a phenomenal, especially uh, really like a year and a half ago. If you had the, the 20%, 30%, 50% type revenue growth, investors were all over that, right? Wall Street was all over that. That's not the market we're in anymore, right? And, um, you know, in that sort of market, like the, a lot of these stocks falter, and so money gets rotated from a lot of the seen as riskier stocks, right, to a lot of what could be seen as safety stocks. For instance, like an Apple stock, right? Uh, energy stocks are seen as like safety stocks right now, which they're not really safety stocks, but you know. Uh, it's a commoditized business and they go through some really, really tough cycles and ask anybody that's in a, um, you know, an oil or gas investor and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you the honest, the, the truth around that. Those stocks are not safety stocks, but the market sees those as safety stocks right now, right? And so, Market's kind of flooded to a lot of those sorts of stocks right now. And so my stocks in, in this wall of, wall of worry that's in front of us, which is inflation, inflation's gone insane, which is uh, around obviously how many times the Fed's going to raise rates, which is around uh, potential recession, all the, 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 the big wall of worry that's in front of us right now, right? Russia, Ukraine, 
obviously uh, commodities going up, all those sorts of things. That's not going to be the sort of market where a lot of the stocks I own, right, are going to do well. We're just in a complete risk on uh, market at the moment, right? If we go ahead and pull up, I want to pull up a few of these stocks. And the reason being is these stocks are usually seen as safety or stocks, right? Look at something like a PayPal. This stock's down 61% in the past six months. 61%, like it's PayPal. And so if you see a stock like PayPal down that much, you can understand like a lot of my stocks, they're going to go through some, some rough sledding. If, if PayPal, if investors in Wall Street don't want to buy PayPal and send this stock down 61% in six months, like imagine what, what happens to some of these other stocks, right? Look at something like Shopify, right? 58% down the past six months. 58% in six months for Shopify. Netflix, this stock is down 46% in the past six months. These are some of the biggest of the big companies in the world. Like literally some of the biggest in the world and they just are, are have gotten absolutely shredded in this market. Adobe, Adobe stock. Really? This stock is down over 30% in the past six months. Isn't that an incredible move? And so, you know, Meta, what about Meta? I got that one too. Facebook, 35% in the past six months. Meta is, in my opinion, one of the safest stocks on the market. Look at its balance sheet. Its customer base just continues to use the product. All those sorts of things. Evaluation's insanely low. P of 15 on this stock. Forward P of lower than that. Uh, great opportunity long term. But but this sort of market, it doesn't want anything uh, that, that is seen as kind of a, even remotely risky, right? And so that's how you get those stocks to go down that much. And so, you know, for some of the stocks I hold, man, you know, it's tough sledding out there, right? It's very, very tough sledding in a, in a risk-off market where investors just don't want to pay anything for, for growth companies. And all those companies just went through, all those are profitable uh, companies, right? And they just, they got, no, they got nothing, right? Second reason is some of my companies have missed earnings. Um, so, which means essentially like, okay, so we just went through the fact that the market doesn't want to take any risk right now, right? Now imagine you miss your, your earnings uh, revenue numbers or you miss guidance, right? That's just another flood out of those sorts of stocks, right? And so in this sort of market, you need to be almost perfect to get any respect right now. The only reason Apple stock's been holding up so well is because they reported perfect last two quarters. Like literally, you couldn't say anything, and I mean anything bad about Apple's last two quarters, and that's the only reason that stock is held up. If it wasn't for the fact that they reported literally perfect quarters, they would have fallen as well. I've seen companies report good earnings and get damaged heavily, fall 20, 30, 40%, right? And so in this sort of market, if you're not coming through with perfection, you better be ready for a, a big slap, okay? A uh, Will Smith type slap, okay? And that's exactly what has happened in this market where, you know, a lot of these companies, uh, especially that I own, could have missed a revenue number or missed a guidance number and just, you know, folks are like, oh, you know, I'm out of that stock. And so that's the sort of market we're in right now where you, if you're not coming through with perfection, you say bye-bye. That's all I have to say about that, okay? That's the second reason. Third reason up here, retail has went bye-bye out of this market, right? And especially if we talk about, you know, let, let's, re, let's reference a couple, a few names here that I've been investing very heavily in for the past, you know, six to 12 months. A Tattoo Chef, right? Tattoo Chef is a, a company that went SPAC, right? So it never had the Wall Street support from the beginning. So the, the only folks that have really supported that stock have for the most part been retail, right? Well, the issue is if retail all leaves the market, uh, who you got left supporting that stock other than maybe me at that point in time, right? Wall Street hasn't come to that baby yet. They, they will whenever the, the market goes back risk on again, but right now we're not in that sort of market. So if you have retail all saying buy, selling out their shares, right? It's, it's hard to get the buying pressure on the other side to fulfill um, that so the stock price just kind of ends up floundering and just going down and down and down, right? Until you get to the, back to that risk on moment. Think about a stock like Honest. They went, they went public, in, in my opinion, at the worst time possible, right around May of 2021 when all the retail hype and all the excitement in the market was already starting to fade and everything was starting to, you know, uh, go down, right? And that's a stock I've obviously been buying a lot of the past six to 12 months, uh, but specifically the past six months, I've been adding a ton of shares and it's just continued to get damaged. Every share I bought in Honest is down. I, I bought the dip, I bought the dip, I bought the dip, I bought the dip, and every single time I bought the dip, that one just continues to go down. It doesn't have retail support and it doesn't have Wall Street support. So it's, it's in no man's land right now. Obviously for somebody like myself that believes that stock's going to $20 plus over the next few years and, and is getting pick up shares at four or $5, um, you know, that's very, very attractive, but we can't deny the fact that 
in the short term, that stock just has almost no hope until we go risk on market or they get to profitability, right? And so, you know, this is just kind of what, what happens in the market. Oatly, Oatly is a stock I've been buying very heavily more toward the past three months. Um, and, and that stock's just every single share I've bought of Oatly is down, 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 right? It's a money loser. It's a huge revenue growth opportunity. It's a huge business growth opportunity. But for an Oatly, right, it doesn't have Wall Street support yet. And it retail's got on bye-bye out of the stock market. And let me show you some numbers kind of around this so you can kind of get a picture of, of you know, how, got, how rough it's kind of gotten for, for retail, right? So obviously a lot of retail got into the market in late 2020 and early 2021, right? And uh, like the first, like basically second half of 2020 and the first half of 2021. And the reason being is a lot of people were making a lot of money in the market. It attracted a lot of folks. People were at home. Um, you know, everybody wanted to become a, a stock trader or whatever. And that's just like the, the period we kind of went through, right? It was the closest thing in the tech bubble we've had. Well, margin debt. It, you know, it just kind of spiked up throughout 2021, essentially, right? And it hit a peak actually in November at $918 million of basically margin debt that was outstanding. Now, something important to understand is as the stock market grows and grows over time, and there's more money in the stock market, you should expect there to be more money in, in margin debt, essentially. That's just the way the law, you know, the numbers end up working at the end of the day. If you have a bunch more money in the market, the amount of money on margin is going to be uh, elevated, right? Substantially. And so if we take a peek here, we're at $911 million in margin on August, uh, in August of 2021. And those numbers have just been falling and falling and falling, uh, especially obviously this year down to 829. Then it spiked up a little bit to 835. Now in, at the end of March, we're at 799. Where's April going to be? 750, 775. Um, could be the lowest in, in quite some time. And basically how this works is as, um, Retail gets hit in the market, right? Uh, you know, folks just aren't as uh, likely to go on margin because they're getting margin calls or they're just uh, been hurt bad. And I take it back to a situation. I, my worst year in the stock market ever by far, actually, um, was 2015. And that was a year in which I got into a lot of short-term trading. I got into, uh, like, went, I kind of went away, away from everything that made me successful. And I started messing around with margin a lot. And um, there was one point where I had, you know, um, 50% of my account balance was, was margin money, right? And by the end of 2015, zero was margin money. Um, and I lost a substantial amount of money that, that year. It was my worst year ever in the stock market by a mile from a psychological perspective and from just uh, uh you know getting shredded in the market i mean really shredded like money that was lost that was that you know it took me several years to to get back to to higher levels essentially right and so that's kind of the way it, the way it works in the market now the interesting thing about margin so first off 99.9 percent .9 of people shouldn't be ever even engaging in margin um but the interesting thing about margin is Usually people get into margin when, when the market's kind of at all-time highs or, or, you know, there's great feelings around the market. And usually people don't want to do any margin when the market's low and the market's been damaged. And actually, it should work the opposite way. If the market's at all-time highs, you should actually be very, very afraid of margin. And if the market's uh, down substantially, you know, if you're going to do margin, that's a more attractive time to do margin than the other way because the other way you can just get absolutely, you know, slammed, right? And so... And if we look at this here, December 2018, it was a phenomenal time to be a buyer of stocks. And see, I was a, one that was buying stocks very heavily during that time. And uh, other than right now, that was a time period I've been the most invested in, in many, many years. And so, you know, a 554 mil we had dropped down to in terms of margin debt. That was outstanding from 665 where you entered the year at. And so this was a situation where as people got shredded in the market and just tore up, tore up, the amount of people that wanted to do margin just went down and down and down. And the amount of money they had on margin just went down and down and down. I mean, you had margin calls coming in, and that was just something that obviously heavily damaged investors during that time. And, um, you know, that, that's a very similar situation we have going on now. I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if April numbers are down more. And we'll just have to see how obviously all that plays out there. Margin, I think, is always an important thing to kind of keep an eye on from the market standpoint, okay? Now, Let's talk about, um, you know, kind of what I see playing out here as far as the markets and, um, you know, when does a pain end in, in the kind of the two scenarios I see most realistic. And let me talk you guys through that. By the way, if you're wondering why my voice is messed up today, <clears throat> it was, a couple of days ago, I was already like had I was starting to lose my voice. And then we did Millennial Money and it ended up being like an hour and a half show. And uh, man, I just did my voice in. So my voice is like done now at this point in time. Okay. So that's why I, I you know, that might sound a little different. So 
two scenarios I see. First is a risk on in the second half of 2022. Now, this is what Wall Street has been talking about the whole time. So going into this year, it was very, very interesting in January listening to um, you know, folks on Wall Street that would go on CNBC. All of them kind of telegraphed this move of, you know, first half of the year is going to be very volatile and rough and tough sledding. Uh, second half of the year is going to be is going to be much better, right? And it's just, you know, they, they all telegraphed that move. I remember I'd watch CNBC. I always like to, in terms of when I actually watch CNBC, I watch it mainly in December and January because I like to kind of see what people are talking about. And it's kind of all coming to fruition. But at the end of the day, when you think about Wall Street, right, if they all think a certain way, that's what's going to end up happening. So if they're all saying, ah, yeah, I'm not going to be too, um, you know, uh, risk on in the market the first half of the year, shoot, that's the way the market's going to end up being. Like if that's how they all end up feeling and they don't want to take risk, even if stock prices get slashed, they're not going to do it. They're, they're going to end up being in, a, being in a situation where they're just going to hold cash. They're not going to be actively uh, out there bidding up stocks, right? And and if they are investing in any stocks, they're going to invest in what is seen as the safety stocks. That's what ends up happening, right? But the, the whole time I've heard them talk, they always have talked about the second half of the year is going to be much better than the first half of the year. And this is from the people that are more bullish than bearish and people that are a little more bearish than bullish. Um, that's the way most of them have talked this entire time. And so naturally, if you know that sticks, then end up you know the, the second half of the year will, will be when things start coming together. Also, I think there's going to be something that plays out in the next one to two months that I think is very, very big, is the rate of increase in inflation will start slowing. So in I've explained this a million times, and I think everybody, you know, 99% of my people understand this now, but for the 1% that don't, what that means essentially is the, you know, let, let's say you're growing 8% inflation, all of a sudden, you know, 8.5%, all of a sudden comes down to 7.5%, and then 6.5%, and then 5%. And I think that'll be a big psychological thing to see the rate of increase starting to fall. And so although you're still going to have inflation, pretty darn high inflation, in my opinion, it's going to be that rate of increase that's going to start falling. And the main reason is comps are obviously really, really tough year over year when it comes to inflation, um, if you're trying to get that, that rate increase. And so I think when the market sees that, it's going to be big for the psychology of the market and folks saying, okay, inflation's starting to come down. We're starting to get to realistic levels. Okay. So that's one scenario I see playing out. The second scenario I see playing out, right. And this is a, this would be more pain for quite a while, which I wouldn't necessarily mind it because this is just a year. Like I've always, I've just said like 2022 is a year for me where I just plow money into stocks. That's, that's what I'm doing this year. Um, you know, some years I might buy real estate, some years I might hold more cash this year for me, I'm just like, give me stocks, give me stocks, give me stocks. I'm just plowing in the money. Right. And that's my plan for basically this entire year. So, but number two would be a major recession hits and we don't go risk on until 2023, right? So that would be a scenario where, you know, let's say real estate starts to get hit, jobs start to be lost, and we go into a real recession in either the summertime or the fall time. And that'd be a situation where the market still wouldn't want to go risk on. No, the, the market would go risk on before the recession's over. So do keep that in mind. That's the way it plays out every single time. The recession can still be going on and the market already goes risk on. And that, that screws with people's minds in a big way because they're like, wait a minute, we're in a recession right now. The stock shouldn't be going up. What is going on? And, and it's just, it, the market's always trying to play out like six months into the future, essentially. And that's the way Wall Street thinks. Wall Street's usually thinking about six months in the future. And so, if you even have a scenario where you have a recession, um, you know, stocks would get hit initially, but then uh, they would start going risk on before uh, the recession's even done, which once again, it blows people's minds, but that's the way it works out every single time. I've tracked the stock market for a long, long time now and been doing this for a long, long time. And every single time, that's the way it plays out. And um, including, and then obviously the 2020 situation where stocks were coming back so fast, so strong, and people are like, what in the world? How are stocks coming back this strong? Like we got the world economy shut down, da, da, da. And uh, you go back to the 08. 2009 recession, you know, we still were in tough economic times in all of 2009 and into 2010. And there was a situation where the, the market bottomed in February 09, kind of premature, but that's the way the market works and it goes risk on. So that would be a scenario that takes longer to play out and we wouldn't go risk on until 23. So as far as me, 
as a long-term investor, either way works for me. Um, you know, if we go risk on in the second half and a lot of these stocks, stocks start to move, great. Um, you know, if we wait till 23 to go risk on, that's fine. That's just a longer time for me to add more ownership in companies that I love for the long term, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video as always in just kind of the transparency and me trying to cover, you know, uh, kind of what's going on in my perspective out there. Make sure you check out that first link in the description, FTX US, and get up to $100 in crypto free. Much love as always and have a great day.